Quitty Vitties Cappuccino Stout from St. John's, Newfoundland. It has absolutely no other information on the label. It calls itself a strong beer and it says keep it cold. <laughs> so today's video, as you might have guessed, is a uh, quick review, well not really a review, feature, whatever, of this uh, portable digital microscope that uh, Banggood sent me to take a look at. Not a huge amount of information on the box. It's got a seven inch LCD screen, claims up to 1200 times magnification, 12 megapixel HD, and a bunch of uh, keywords and stuff on there. But that's not really what we're here for. Uh, a little manual, which is mostly talking about its features again. Um, this is one feature that I am Going to I think I'm going to find useful is the ability to tilt it a little bit both to get the lens out of the way of my work but also to uh, deal with the reflections and glare from the overhead lighting up above as, as you can see on the screen here a lot of what I do on my workbench gets glare from these ridiculously bright lights I've got up above so hopefully that will fix that problem it shows that it can get down as close as 20 millimeters from the workpiece and you can pull it away 40 millimeters. I think that could come in handy. And then there's a whole bunch of specs and stuff on this side and features and whatnot. Uh, I'm not going to get too far into that. Talks a little bit about some of the buttons, but that's easier just to show you. So in the box we have the microscope itself i'll just do that you've seen enough people do peels i don't have to do it every single time in the bottom of the box we have a european power adapter but it's good for 100 to 240 volts so they did send me this little travel adapter that big clive tends to call these a death adapter and because you can accidentally plug in you know between the ground and one of the, and the live or the neutral. There's nothing really stopping it. And besides, it doesn't have the ground on that side anyway. I'm not gonna use it, which means I'm not gonna use this because it's just standard USB anyway, and I got lots of those around here. Comes with a USB cable for powering the thing. Always useful. And then the other two things in the box are the weighted base and the arm that holds the microscope itself. So, oh, that is tight. Hang on here. There, yeah, I just loosen that up so that it's got some friction, but it's still movable. I'll thread this guy on here. Now then, this has a little rack and pinion adjustment for height on it. And it's got a little walking ring down there so you can walk it straight. There we go. And on the back there, there's a little lock nut. Oh, wow. That moves very freely. So that locking uh, screw is useful. I think now that that bit of leverage is on there, I will tighten that up a little bit more so that I can move it, but it doesn't flop around. Uh, the microscope will drops through there and these little set screws tighten it up. Well, that's kind of nice. They've got little softer plastic uh, tips on there to grip into the thing without marring it. That's nice. So that's the base out of the way. Um, here is the unit itself. It has eight LEDs uh, as an illuminator around the lens, plus this little frosted piece around the edge for extra light coming in. On the back we have the micro USB, a little recessed reset button. I guess just in case it gets locked up or whatever. There's a micro SD, aka T-Flash, and there is a brightness adjustment for the LED lights. This is really tight going in there. It should have had a little bit thinner um, jacket on the plug so that it's not rubbing on there, but I was able to get it in. I'll just plug the power into a USB uh, plug off the side and you see the little red light comes on. So we will push the power button here couple of seconds that turns blue and 
camera wakes up. And that is a picture of the little Luna base. Let's bring this down some more here and just focus it. Yeah, that's the texture on the base here, which is pretty neat. And if I reach around back here, where's that illuminator? Yeah, so it is actually doing some work. That's cool. Um, I guess let's get something underneath there. How about this PCB ruler? That's got lots of tiny little things. So that is five millimeters on the screen right there. A little bit more than five millimeters. Maybe we should lift this up a little bit. Okay, I've just had to back my camera up uh, away from my workbench towards me uh, by about 25 or so centimeters to get this all in the shot. But there we go. That is as far up as the, th the uh, microscope will go. And what is that? 10, 20, 25, 27 millimeters worth of field of view down here on the stage. And that puts the lens about 13 millimeters above the work surface. And still there's pretty good magnification on it. There's a SOT 23 uh, footprint. So that's, uh, that's pretty good even at this distance and you've got lots of room to work. And then when you get the lens as close as possible, crazy close, that's basically two millimeters filling the screen, which is just craziness. Let's put my soldering tip in there just for reference. And that's the fine soldering tip. That's this little tiny one. So I think that is going to let me get really, really close to my work. So let's just take a quick look through the controls and stuff here. This is the focus knob. So after you've adjusted the height of the thing to where you want it and lock it down, then you adjust that focus knob. It's a mechanical thing and it's not the smoothest thing in the world. You can feel there's some friction in it, but it does the job. Let's just straighten that up so the OCD people aren't screaming at me. Or maybe I want it on a skew. Whatever. Um, so we have a power button over here. Push for two seconds to make it do anything. Focus knob, a menu, uh, mode, kind of a switch, uh, and then up, down, and OK for when you're in the menu. So let's pop into the menu. One thing that makes it a little bit harder to uh, see the menus is it makes the menus translucent on top of the image. So we'll just Maybe if we got a blank image underneath here, it's easier to see. I don't know. Anyway, uh, on screen we have resolution or we have options for video resolution. You see, it's in a video menu right here. So 1080 full HD. That is recording onto the SD card. Uh, that's not what you're seeing on screen. Or if for some reason you want it to be 720 or VGA, you can do that. And turn on cyclical recording mode or just record until the card is full cyclical basically records a bunch of three minute or five minute or ten minute files closes the file off starts a new one when you run out of room on the sd card it just deletes the oldest one exactly the same way as a dash cam works or if it's cyclical is turned off then it just records until you tell it not to High dynamic range, on or off, just like any camera. Exposure, you can adjust it. Date stamp, on or off. I've left it turned off because date stamps annoy me. Push the menu again, and we go into a more general one. LCD brightness, you can have it dim the LCD after a while with the screen, or just leave it to on all the time, which I'm going to do. Same with auto power off, you can do that. Frequency, that is the frequency of the electricity here, a.k.a. the lighting flicker. I've got it set to 60 hertz because I'm in North America. Auxiliary to the line. I cannot find what that means. Actually, I just had a thought. Let me turn it off and go back into there. Ah, that's the crosshairs. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah, you see there's crosshairs on there now. Okay. I'm not sure if I like them. Let's turn that off. 
language is a whole bunch of them i'm going to leave it in english but there you go i don't know how well translated they are from the chinese that this is written in but it works date and time i've already got that set okay 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 back to the menu format you can format your sd card i don't have one in there I would recommend that you use uh, an SD card that you don't use for anything else and format it on this because when I was experimenting with it earlier, I could not get it to record until I formatted the SD card. Your mileage may vary. And that sets all the default uh, factory defaults back uh, and version is, there it is, a uh, softer version from 2020 ninth month 27th day i don't know that it's possible to update it so i don't know if there's any any uh use in uh identifying that hey anyway, back to this uh this d button here changes you from video mode to still camera mode to playback mode just like so many other little cameras so let me throw in an sd card oh yeah there's these two uh, little icons down here. The bottom one is battery, and right now it shows that it's plugged in. Um, let me just unplug it from the charger, and you see it shows battery now. Plug it back in. There we go. Uh, that one shows that there is no SD card. I'm just going to give it a little reach around here. Plug in the SD card back there. But now you notice that that little X in the middle of the SD card icon is gone, so that's all happy. So what else do we have here? Oh yeah, these buttons here, when you're just in normal mode, notice this, you can do some digital zoom as well if you want to on top of the optical. But I think I'm just gonna leave it uh, fully zoomed out. So right now, uh, if we go into photo mode and push the okay button, yeah, that should have taken a picture. Uh, we'll check later. Yeah, there's the playback, and it's showing that it's image two. And scroll your playback, there's image one. So go back to video mode here. And if I push the OK button in video mode, notice I've got a little flashing indicator up there, and this guy is also flashing. So now we are recording video of what we are doing here. And I'll just slide this guy through the frame just to make it actually be video. I've got this thing a fair distance away from this from the uh, lens right now and on a wonky angle, but this is just to demonstrate it. And then I'll push the OK button again to stop that. So some of the other tricks that this thing can do, if you plug it into your computer, it will ask you if you want this to be a mass storage device, a PC camera, or record mode and record mode is just back in normal if you put it into pc camera mode it shuts this screen off and all of a sudden the treats it on the computer like a webcam over on the computer i'm just using obs to record what we're doing here but you can see in the preview window there it is showing up as a webcam and if i transition now you should see it uh, full screen completely I think and let's just zoom around this is a little bit awkward because I'm having to look at my computer monitor rather than the monitor on the thing but I think you can see what's going on this is Linux but uh, it'll show up as a as a just a USB camera USB 2.0 on whatever operating system you're running on uh, shows up as a 1280 by 720 video source you, if you saw the mailbag, you will have seen this already. And there's a link down below with discount code if you choose. Anyway, here is uh, Banggood's webpage about it. Must tool 12, G1200 digital microscope, 12 megapixels, 7 inch large color screen. Currently, it is on sale for 75 bucks American. Normally, it's 106. This sale is lasting until August 31st, but as I said, there is also a discount code down in the description. There's a few other reviews of it in various different languages on that web page if you're interested. And it just goes through all the specs. Oh yeah, there is a built-in lithium battery so you can run for a few hours 
when you're not uh, not connected to power if you want to. And then all this stuff down here is just copy and pasted straight out of that little manual that comes with it. So there you go. But the main reason that I think I'm going to be using this thing is for surface mount soldering. So I'll pull out one of these surface mount soldering practice kits that has a bunch of uh, pads for 805 resistors, 603 resistors, some 1206 components. So I'm going to just toss it down underneath here. Set the focus as nicely as I can. What is that? That's 603. So let's just try those. I'm not even going to bother with the 805s. So there's the components there. It's easy to see them like that on the microscope. Let's push that guy out of the way a little bit. Oh, this is the first time I've ever soldered under high magnification. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm not, uh, not looking directly at what I'm doing anymore. Oh, wow. That tip didn't clean very well, did it? That's a little bit better. Let's tin the one pad. There we go. Blob of solder on there. And remove that over a little bit. This is really twitchy. Can't even grab that with ceramic teasers. I'm going to have to use these needle pointed ones. Wow, that's going to take a lot of getting used to at that high magnification. I wonder if I should try it at a little bit lower magnification, maybe. Yeah, I'll try it zoomed in that much. We'll see. Hmm. Not ideal. Did that solder? Looks like it took a huge blob on the other side, though. Let me just zoom out and try something else here. Put him here, and it looks like I managed to get a little bit of solder onto that pad there somehow. So I will just make use of it. Lingered a little bit too long, but I'm using my scalpel blade this time to hold down. So maybe that'll be better. That's still not pretty. I'm going to need a lot more practice. Oh, I think that's going to be an excellent addition to my, uh, my arsenal of tools in my little basement hobby shop here. Clearly, if you were doing professional soldering um, or at a professional workbench, you'd want uh, probably a binocular microscope so that you could actually see in three dimensions. It might be a little bit easier to uh, to work on some of that tiny stuff. But for for a hobbyist, for under a hundred bucks, I think that's a fine thing to have. Um, I mean, if that's in your budget, of course. I've done surface mount soldering before on. A similar board to that one uh, specifically this one here and just using not even as fancy an iron as this uh, what iron did I use I used this crusty old bastard um, and just got my head right down in it and you can tell even with this camera that I did a pretty craptacular job actually might as well look at it on the microscope because I can. Yeah, so that was done with that big ugly iron and even the 805s are not great. I spent quite a bit of time on it uh, without the camera. I started it with the camera. But obviously there's a lot of room for improvement over that technique. 
And I think actually, where are they? I think these ones came out a little bit better, even though it was the first time using this piece of equipment. So, so yeah, I think uh, with a bit of practice of uh, soldering under the microscope, which is a whole new skill set, I think this is going to be a very useful little tool for me. Thanks to Banggood for sending it along for my uh, for my review, such as it is. Um, anyways, questions and comments down below as usual. Uh, thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.